Guys, this car review is brought to you by Carvana, which is revolutionizing the way we buy and sell cars online. Think about this. How are you going to know what your car is worth if you want to sell it without going to a dealership, dealing with those kinds of folks, getting this estimate, and not really knowing if it's legit, right? How do you even know if, you, if they don't even give you an estimate if you're not trying to buy a new car from their store, right? Carvana is different. They make it easy to find out quickly how much your car is worth. You just go to their website and type in some boilerplate info like the license plate or VIN. They then spit you out an offer. It's not an estimate. It's a real offer. If you choose to accept the offer, Carvana will come to you, do a quick review of the car, and then cut you a check and take your car away. You can do it all 100% online without ever having to speak with a used car salesman. Hit the link in the video description to get started. You can just check it out and see what the offer is, or you can actually go through with it and sell your car. Over 200,000 folks have sold their car to Carvana online, and you could be next. Hit the link in the description and see what their offer is. Maybe you want to sell. Guten Morgen. Hello, everybody. And wow, what a day do we have for you. And what a car. So good. It's Half so good. A million dollars. Five hundred and thirty four thousand dollars out the door the ferrari 812 gts uh, mechanically identical to the uh 812 super fast and if you haven't seen my video of the 812 super fast definitely go check that out um gts features a power retractable uh hard top uh and some really nice buttressing work on the rear end mm -hmm. um Ferrari will tell you that this is the first series production front engine rear drive V12 convertible since the Daytona. Right. And that is true only really depending on where you draw the line at series production because the 550 Barquetta, uh, they made 498 of those. The 575 Super America, they made 559 of those. The 599 Aperta, they made 80 of those. And the F60 America, they made 10. So, so is this because they'll make as many of these as they can sell many and the other ones sell. are limited correct. to some sort of uh, some sort of production limit? Okay. Correct, correct. Right. Uh, so series production, you order one and you will get one eventually. Uh, 14 seconds is the time it takes for the top to deploy up or down and you have this fabulous uh, power rear window which you can lower independently. Genius. Genius, Genius. move. That's a, that's a pro level uh, move. Um, the engine, identical to the Superfast, 789 horsepower, six and a half liter V12, uh, making 589 pound-feet of torque. 80% of your peak torque is available at 3,500 RPM. Peak horsepower is available at 8,500 RPM, and the uh, red line is 8,900 RPM. That is so great. This is it encourages you to rev it out. You, like you must have rev. to rev it out to get everything out of this car. Yep, you get the seven-speed dual-clutch transaxial, actual, 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 uh, and you know because you don't have those beautiful rear buttresses that the super fast has. Uh, one of the things I love is what when they have to make a car aerodynamic without using a big wing or without using high up arrow. So they redid the whole under tray and the rear diffuser, and now you can see there's this kind of funky thing in the middle of the rear diffuser that. Uh, compensates for the lack of buttresses up top mm -hmm. uh, and also to make it very pleasant in the cabin if you reach your hand over the windshield Zach, you, got you can feel lips, right? the little lips mm -hmm. and then if you reach behind your head here you've got the little hoops so between the lip and the hoop it bends the air around it keeps it over the cab the cabin a little bit in an optimized right. way uh, it is fabulous um, like the 812 Superfast, you have adaptive magnetic dampers, you have variable drift control, you have all the uh, Manatino drive modes, uh, and you have rear uh, steer, because this vehicle is knocking on the door of 4,000 pounds, yeah. and it's also really long. It's 184 inches long, I think. It's really that's, long. That's quite big. Right. You've got a front engine V12 car that's not front engine. Right. It's front mid. Right. The entire V12 is behind the front axle. So it is a true mid-engine car, even though it's in the front. Now, we put in race, we put in manual, race we, yourselves, and we drive. Oh. <laughs> and we get right to the business. Oh my gosh. The business, by the way, 
by the way, is waking the dead. That's what this car yeah. does. Woo! That's, that's the sound that made me fall in love with this brand, really. When I was a kid, it was just V12 screaming. I, didn't, I know the V8s are, also have a scream to them, but... Well, gosh. Ferrari V8s are good, admittedly. And I say that as someone who owns one. But Ferrari V12s are better. They're exceptional. They are exceptional. Zero to 60 in under three quarter mile, 10 four at 138. Yeah. But more importantly, we have come to the tunnel. I think, what do you think, five, Zach? Second gear from five? Yeah, I think that sounds good. Second gear, 5,000 RPM. Actually, let's just let it clear, huh? There's no one behind us, obviously. We started before the tunnel, just for you guys to hear. First this. gear, 1,000 RPM. Oh my God. I mean, even though you've got big oh, torque all the way, right, there's really quite a lot that happens above seven. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's still lots of power to be delivered. Oh, man. This car is crazy fast. The coupe uh -huh. version being called super fast is an incredibly appropriate name. But what's really, really, really impressive is the agility, the weight, the fact that it's front, rear, the fact that it's so long, it should not be as agile, but rear steer is magic. Well, I think it's 47 front, 53 rear weight distribution, yeah? So like, that's how much weight they've set in the back by moving the axle rearward. It's got a transaxle uh, DCT, of course. Because it's naturally aspirated, there's no turbo surge. You have a linear torque curve, so you can roll into it at any RPM and expect roughly the same result. Wow. Yeah, and I know how fast we're going because I have this display right here in front of me on the dash and I have it in the performance setting so I can see uh, our Gs, our revs, and our miles per hour. Never again do you have to go, you know how fast that was? Oh, they know. Yeah, yeah I, that's they exactly know. what this is for. It's a gimmick, but I like it. I do like it. Full throttle in this is really an experience. Oh the sound a, is perfect, dude. It's perfect. There's a real limited number of places you can actually get to full throttle. Uh, Malibu isn't really one of them. You have to. You need room. room. Yeah. What are like Texas? Where are all these trucks going? Is there something we don't know? I don't know. It's so bananas. What setting are you in right now in terms of suspension I'm and all that stuff? race. Just race. regular old race. Another Yee. thing very impressive about this car that really comes from having the engine set so far back is the ride quality. Spectacular. Road work ahead. Uh -oh. Let's be ready. Let's go slow for a second in case there's people working here. I don't want to. I don't want to cause a ruckus if we don't have to. Absolutely. Um, the ride quality is really, really, really good for a front engine car. You know, it's it's not stiff, it's not bouncy. Right. It really absorbs bumps well. And if you hit Matt, can you feel it? I just went into bumpy road mode. You can quickly activate comfort mode in the shocks. Yeah, the mag ride comfort shocks are really, really impressive. Instantly, like even, on the button. Even driving up here on the highway, and I drove it on like the really cracky road that leads to this, and I was amazed at how smooth it rode, and how quiet it was, how little of that was transmitted to the seat. I mean, it really, really rides nice. Wow, this is well, There's some kind of project on. happening up here. Well, that's okay, it's there. We're going there. a certain attitude or some people like bystanders might think a certain thing versus your vintage Ferrari. Right. But I think most people are pretty happy to see them because they excite them. I really do. What I found at Cars and Coffee were that people were very attracted to this car. They thought it was the coolest. I think it's I think it's pretty gorgeous. 
And a bunch of my rich guy friends, when I posted a picture on Instagram, said that they had them on order. Like five, six different people. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I mean, the proportions of this, with the short deck and the long hood, what's not to love, really? Well, if you're a purist, I suppose. Whoa! If you're a purist, you know, it adds 180 some odd pounds. Whatever! I, I, that's yeah. that's whatever. my attitude. I'm deep into whatever. Like. Stability. Jeez. Lots of stability. I mean, it, sh it should be stable at this speed. Whoa! Because here's the thing, like, the, you know, the coupe version of this is 38.50 pounds, right? It's not light. No. It, I mean, it's, for what it is, it's fine. It's a modern car. It, you know, there's got a Camaro's heavier than that. But it's not a really light car. So adding 150 pounds to have this experience in the window, oh, it's worth it. Worth it. And it, it employs tricks, you know, the rear steer is sort of a magic trick right. for long wheelbase cars, but it works. And it doesn't, to me anyway, even though I can tell it's there just a little bit, it doesn't remove the feel for me. It doesn't make it less fun. The steering is so sharp, it feels like you basically have the same steering rack as the F8, but the, it's, it's so sharp up there. Like, do you like to ride in the front or the back of a roller coaster? Oh, the back. I like the back. Yeah. But sometimes the front is good. This is a, this is like if you want to, if you're a front of the roller coaster guy or girl or, or non-binary, then you might want the mid-engine car because it feels like you're driving from the front axle. Right. If you like the back of the roller coaster, this offers that type of experience where you're controlling the front, but you're also following it. It's not bad. It's just different. But I, I, I like this position more than the AMG GT, where I feel like I'm I'm holding onto the back of the roller coaster. Yeah, well, you've got a little more car behind you yeah. here, so you're not like really fully sitting on the rear axle. Yeah, I don't like sitting on the rear axle, because then I feel like the hood is moving and I'll right. move after it, like a fire engine with an axis. Sorry, I keep mobbing. I can't, I can't help myself. It's really like, makes you want to go really fast. You know how, you know, and, and you want to like road trip it. You know, I want to go far and fast in this thing, but it's not like, you know, there's like the Q ship where it's far and fast, but with some element of stealth. Yeah not here oh no this is far and fast and look at me go it, yeah but it's a little more subtle than like an Aventador you know yeah. or SVJ like you know the competitors this this is the more subtle one this depending on your color DBS wow you know I, I love this so much <laughs> yeah man it's so rowdy but it's also like just really kind of comforting. Like, it's not like the... No, fourth <laughs> gear doesn't end. <laughs> fourth doesn't... gear goes for basically forever. Oh my gosh. Here's a, a little turning radius. Let's see what we've got. Super long wheelbase, but rear steer. Right? So that's, that's what you got. It's actually, it's pretty good. Believe it or not, that may not look so great on video, but believe it or not, for a car of this length, that's pretty good. And uh, one of the, th the things that I actually have trouble with most with this car is like parking it at like a like a, a standard you know parking lot. That it's tricky. You know the nose lift works good, but it's tricky to get that you know to get that nose in. Because Zachary, you can't see it. Zachary Drive. Sound, sound. All right, well, I apologize for the audio uh, thing. Zach's lab is working. I will speak into this mic, and uh, there we are. All right, I'm going to shout and giggle now. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> That's real oh crazy. Oh, my God. Real crazy. Oh, this is everything a car should be. It's very good. Oh, it's so good. I love the 550.
50 when I saw it and heard it, and then 599 I always thought was kind of weird looking, but when they came out with the F12, I was like, that is almost perfect. Yeah, well the 599 was a real in. exercise in aerodynamics and it was a, that's a, that was a Castriota vision, you know? He that had a lot car? of Jason in it. Yeah, he designed that car, yeah. It just, I thought it was just really smooth and gorgeous. The F12 had a little bit more like brute force to it, yeah. and attitude, and uh, and then this is built on the F12 architecture, right? It's 20, it's, yeah, 20, it's an evolution of it. Yeah. Evolution of it. So it, it is like old, but I, the experience really makes you not care. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it's nuts. Come on. It's nuts. And it's hard to believe, you know, I mean, uh, you expect it from Ferrari, but with 789 horsepower, it's really got enough brakes. It's got enough what? Brakes. Oh yeah, big carbon ceramics. I, I can feel the rear steer a little bit. I don't like it. I feel like I've I've driven other rear steer cars where it's not uh, as present. And when I drove the, F, uh, the FF, I remember going around some corners and, and it felt like I was drifting. I knew I wasn't, but it's like you feel the back end being brought around. Yeah. I appreciate the tech and how usable it makes cars, but it's not as seamless as I like. Zach is going. Dude, <laughs> for a car that has a huge V12 up front, it feels really light, but without feeling like hyper stiff. Like I think, what did you, you drove the Super Legera? Yeah. How did that compare? Because I didn't actually drive that car. You mean the super fast? Sorry, the DBS Super Legera. Oh, the DBS Super Legera. This is tighter, uh, lower center of gravity. You know, uh, it, it definitely feels a little lighter. I think the steering is sharper. That is a more, uh, obviously that's very fast, but it's a little more of a relaxed car. Whereas this, uh, and it's a little more of a brute yeah. with the turbo engine. Right. Whereas this, you know, you're either kind of cruising along quietly in automatic or you're, yeah, you know. Yeah. Speaking of which. Which you should be doing the latter, by the way. Shifts. Yeah, it, the transmission kicks the perfect amount. Yeah, a little the bit, Aventador yeah. engine feels like it has more rotating mass. It it, yeah. it makes a crazy amount of power, you know, but it but it it doesn't quite feel that it spins quite as freely as this engine does. This engine is really un, untethered from gravity. You know? Everything about the Aventador, I think, feels big. It never yeah. I've never had it shrink around me. This feels like a small car. The front visibility for a car with a, an engine up front is really remarkable. Yes. I mean, I was expecting that to be a huge compromise because like the 765, you know, you feel like you're sitting on the front bumper. This drops away and the seating position is a little bit high, which helps. I think but, I think they've, they've tricked us a little by making the seat an inch or two higher than it would be in, say, a Corvette. Yeah, you'd in be a Corvette, down here you'd be a sitting on the floor, and you then know? you're kind of looking at the wheel. But still, the engine, and this is because we have dry sump, right? The engine is shockingly low. Super low. For a dual overhead cam V12, there's no huge bulge in the bonnet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and if you look, if you open the hood, there's a ton of empty space oh, yeah. in front of the engine. I mean, you can put a couple of headlights in another, maybe a two liter uh, four banger up there. Yeah. Front. But, but that that big empty space up there helps keep everything cool along with the extractors that we can see here from the from the seats. Speaking of two liters, did you know that the first Ferrari Grand Tour in 1949 had a two liter V12? Yeah. The, a 166 Inter? Yeah, they used to make really tiny little that's V12s. That's adorable. Yeah, yeah. Well, the 250, the 250, that's, that, those were two and a half liter V12s, yeah. yeah. 
They started it long ago. They're like, no, no, V12, that's our number. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm so glad they continued that tradition. Yeah, they pretty much, you know, I, I read that they only continue the front engine V12 thing as a tradition. Well, I'm glad. I mean, so you think they, they saw better solutions, but they're like, no, no, we'll keep this. I think they have to go well out of their way to make this thing pass whatever the yes. Euro emissions and noise standards Very are. True. And I think it's probably not long for this world. That, yeah, man. That's what makes this car, I think, so important. I mean, it's exceptional. Is this? <laughs> but it's also the end. Yeah. Well, that begs the, 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 the question as we get to the end of this road. I, I think this and the hardtop version are the last purely naturally aspirated Ferraris. Yeah, they probably will be. I mean, that, you know, if, if it's going to be naturally aspirated in anything from here on out, it'll likely be paired with some type of a hybrid system. Yeah. Um, as as in the, the La Ferrari, right? So, right. if you want a naturally aspirated Ferrari, this is it. This is it. This is what you got. Gotta say, for a swan song, they've given you a very good choice. You know, it's oh, yeah. like, hey, this is the only game in town, so our burger doesn't come with Right, right, right. Yourself. No, no. It's like they're giving what you the a beans. Great send -off. And here, pass me the notebook, Zach, because we have to end our. You know, we end Ferrari videos talking about some of the more fun options you can get, like BK. You can have it your way, and uh, and you know, yeah, for a four hundred thousand dollar car. Uh, it's funny that it doesn't come with certain things, obviously, but also you can go pretty above and beyond in the custom department. So this car, actually, the base price is uh, $397,000. The as-tested price is $534,000. So we've gone all the way through the 400s and out the other side. <laughs> blew through the back we, don't even, we don't even stop to collect $200 in no. the $400,000 range. We go right through and out the other side. Um, it has... Sixteen thousand dollars of underhood carbon fiber. Right, go to the, the shot now. The engine covers, the air boxes. Okay, uh, it has uh, the these wheels are eighty one hundred. The carbon fiber side kick plates are ten thousand. Uh, these Daytona style seats are forty one hundred. Power seats, by the way, are seven thousand bucks. For power to seats. get power seats. By the way, these seats are a bit thin on padding. Like. You there, sit down and you go, ooh, yeah. race car, but I don't think I want that in a grand touring car that I would drive across the universe because this is so good. Considering a $400,000 base price and considering that you've now spent eleven grand on these seats, they're a little underwhelming yeah. for eleven grand. Uh, audio. We've got a JBL stereo, uh, $6,200 with CarPlay, $4,200. So you're now uh, $10,400 into stereo. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound very good. Yeah, it sounds really thin. It's not a great stereo, and the CarPlay is... You need it. You The stereo's not good, so you need the CarPlay to make the thing work. So so that's that's mildly egregious. And then you have a bunch of other carbon trim pieces, some of which you might want and some of which you might not. You then have the cap offer is the $33,000 blue Abu Dhabi paint job, which actually is fabulous. It's fabulous. And and yes, $33,000 for paint is a ton of money. But if you look at this paint, and if you think about going to a custom shop in Los Angeles, a foose level shop, and saying, this Ferrari, Abu Dhabi blue, yeah. in the, the door jams, under the hood, I mean, everywhere. It would be 50, 60, 70. Wait, and is this a, it's a layer of paint they put over other colors, right? They Yeah, so the color itself... I think is they're unclear if you could get this color without the super sparkle. Got it. You maybe can. In the shade, it's like a blue gray. Like that's very popular right now. In the sun, it's holy disco ball sparkle. Well, because the, a lot of the money is that disco ball sparkle, right. right? Well, that's what they call it. They call it three, four layer extended paint. Yeah. That's what they call it. So it's about those extra layers of paint. And that's 33 grand. And look, I mean, in Ferrari land, a, an extraordinarily beautiful color for thirty-five grand. It's not. It's not as egregious as a ten thousand dollar carbon fiber kick plate. Well, you it, know, it's uh, you know, ten percent, right? Yeah. So if you were buying a Corolla for twenty grand and they said it's two grand for this other color, 
you might stretch to that. Yeah. Like the Mazda Red. Yeah, it yeah. Is an extra, it is an extra charge. It's not 10%, but it's, if right. you look at it in terms of percentage, it's not as insane as... But you've anything. got, we've got like 30, 30 something percent in options. Um, that um, is bananas. It's, but it, I think, it's not, that's not Ferrari's fault for building a crazy press car. It's got a bunch of cool stuff in it, right? Gives us something to talk about. And it just, I think it just shows that people like you and I, even taking into account that I'm a rather wealthy individual, are completely disconnected from the type of wealth it takes to buy something like this. Yeah. Completely disconnected. We look at this and go, oh my God, and they go, yeah, okay. Right. Okay. It goes like adding a keychain. I know, showed this. Play for them, I, whatever. I showed this to a uh, someone who has one of these on order. You know what he said? I thought it'd be more. He said, I thought it would be more. So, and you it's, know. It's a little cheaper than the Aventador SVJ Roadster. It's like a, they're all within like twenty grand. Yeah. It's, it's slightly more expensive than a seven six five LT, which is and like it's way nicer to use every day than either of those cars. Both of those cars are track focused, yeah. bucket seats, you know, motorsport theater. This is just a very very fast, yeah, uh, sensory experience. But there's no other than the money. You know, there's no trade off. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's not. A, it's an amazing sensory experience, like the SVJ. I think it sounds better. Than the McLaren because that's a twin turbo V8, and and yet you get you know a hardtop convertible. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. If it's like, yeah, get some new padding in the seats, and you could drive this around the world, and it would be wonderful. Totally, you know, some of the interior bits are a little bit old. Totally, uh, well, that's our video. It, it has gone long. Shout out to Ferrari for letting us have a go for a few days in this thing. It's uh, it's good. And uh, thanks to you if you've gotten this far for enduring 28 minutes of Ferrari content. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.